I, um, I speak about strategic and inclusive networking, and tonight I'm going to be speaking about that in the context of conferences. Um, a little more about me is that I've been hosting a podcast for the last three uh, plus years called On The Shoes, where I interview talent professionals about their leadership journey and sort of takeaways that uh, they've learned about relationship building along the way. Because um, as you might also believe, you know, when become successful on their own, so these people are really good at it. Uh, wrote a book, um, which I'm proudly standing next to, because it's a 80% of people in the world want to write one, 1% 1 does, so if you're thinking about it, I encourage you to do it. I'm not, it's a very, very different 1%. And um, I am selling them, I'll sell them at a discount from what I have in my mind, they're on Amazon, but I'll give you 25% off, we'll talk about that later if you're um, And I also do some coaching. And uh, so, Essentially, I, I want to talk about conference experiences because uh, they take a lot of time, money, effort, resources. Who here goes to conferences at least once, once a year or so? Yeah, all right. So pretty much, pretty much everybody. Um, and you go like because there is an opportunity to learn something, uh, but you also go because there are people there that you want to meet. And I know that even though I don't know you, because there was a study by the International Association. <coughs> of events and exhibitions that said that 73%, I think, of like nearly 9,000 respondents said that networking was the top driver for why they chose to attend an event. That makes sense, right? You know, people leave their house to meet people. But then you probably also realize that you and others get to the end of a long weekend and feel like maybe it wasn't worth it. They didn't really meet the people they wanted to meet. So like, why is that happening? If people go because they say it's for networking, almost three out of four people. Well, there's another study by Harvard that talks about how people, networking makes them feel icky. <laughs> networking makes them feel dirty. And so, you know, that's the problem. If, if networking makes people feel dirty, then they're going to get to the event and not do it. Uh, even though that was sort of their intention. So if you're flying across the country, you can't just be going there for content. Uh, trust me, every, everything I say to you right now, you can just get... Literally, you get it by reading a book. Um, the old-fashioned way of getting content. You could listen to a podcast. You could look at a webinar. So content alone can't be the reason you're going to events. You got to be going for the connections. So then, how do you make sure that that actually happens? So tell me, if this resonates with you. You go to an event and you meet. Is this gonna switch? Oh, come on. You meet lots of people. You like can switch it this manually. All right. So you go to events, this is a stack of business cards in front of a keyboard, right? You go to events, you meet a lot of people, you collect a bunch of business cards, you go home, and you put them next to your keyboard. Because you're like, you want to make sure that you, you know, follow up, because that's, that's your intention at least. A few days go by and you realize the stack of cards are kind of just becoming a mess, so you take them and you neatly organize them, and you put them in the back corner of your desk. Does anyone have a box? that they keep their business cards in. <laughs> I resemble that remark is what I'm getting from the back of the room. <laughs> I love it. So, okay, so you got this key, you know, got this little box, business cards, nice and neat. And then, you know, months go by, spring cleaning time, that box is now overflowing. You're like, oh, let me just take them, organize them, nice and neat. And you take them and you put them in a drawer, <laughs> right? And then a year later, you discover them in that drawer and you can't remember where you met these people, what follow-up you were supposed to do, and whether you had done any of it. Does anyone resonate? Yeah? Resemble that. Okay. And what do you do? You take the cards, you recycle them, because you know we're social conscious people, and then what do you do? You go right back outside to another event to start the cycle all over again. So I want you to just stop wasting time networking. That's not effective. I would actually like you to go to fewer events and get more out of it. I want you to be choosier. Why this event? You know, out of all the events you could choose, why are you going to this one? You know, I want you to have a really clear sense. In fact, if you write your follow-up email draft before you go to the event, think of, okay, you're not sending it. <laughs> you haven't met anyone yet, right? But you draft that message. If I met the ideal person, what would I want them to know about me? What would I want to offer them? What would I, you know, how would I want to stay connected? You draft that message and now, now think about it. Okay, couple this with tracking the cards. 
So when you're at an event, making sure that you, you know, the cards that have a higher, you ever been like in these tight networking circles and everyone's sort of standing around and then some guy starts handing out his card, so then everyone starts handing out their card and next thing you know you've collected four or five cards, look you're at a poker game, you're like, what did I have you? No, that's not helpful, you know? But you know, those cards are fine, but the cards from like the one-on-one -on -one conversation where you really got into a great, Paige and I had an amazing conversation. I don't want to lose track of, what a great name for your business, by the way. Very nice. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I don't want to like lose Paige's business card in a random stack because I want to make sure we follow up. So I take the card and I turn the corner. So when I get home and I drop it on the table, I can see it right away and pull it right out. So if I can do that and I have a pre-written message, and I schedule time for a few days after I get home. Within two days, within two days of coming back, you know, if you get back Sunday night, you're not going to immediately sit down and do it probably because you got to like say hi to your dog and you know your inbox and your partner. Maybe that that's not the order. You should probably say hi to your partner first. But I digress. So um, you know, you, but if you schedule the time, you have an hour in your calendar by Tuesday, and you have wouldn't you? Who would follow up? You're right. You do it. But if I'd asked you three seconds earlier who was good at follow-up, people don't usually raise their hands. Oh, we got one in the back. Next month, this is who you're going to have come in. Follow-up is so key. Are you in sales? Yes. See? That's understandable. So um, I, I really think there's a difference between collecting business cards and building relationships. And I want to go back to this. I forget. I don't know this thing. Um, I want to go back to this other idea here about um, about like these tight networking circles. So I'm, you're getting like my top hits. This is my like, you know, 10 minutes, my, my like uh, best of <laughs> real. So my book is called Croissants versus Bagels. And like, as you see here, on one side of the screen, on the right side, you've got people clustered in these little tight circles, these shoulder to shoulder huddles that are impossible to break into. Yes, you can relate, you've seen this. And on the left side, people are standing in a much more open you know, stance, and there's actually a little opening, so there's two little clusters, but it's clear there's a way, if I wanted to walk over, I could, I could wander up. That left side is the croissant. You see? <laughs> All right. How do you do this? So, I want everyone to actually stand up for a second. We're going to shortcut this, but we'll make it happen. I want you to stand shoulder, shoulder, uh, feet, feet shoulder width apart. So your feet are shoulder width apart. Put your right leg half a step back, just half a step back, and turn it to the right, just to like two o'clock. This is not first position. You're not like no wide stance. Okay, and I'll put when you do that. So, so again, shoulders shoulder width apart, right leg back half a step, and then turn to two o'clock, and then just like get into the back leg. Like put your body weight on your back leg. Like kind of you know just like bounce in it for a second. I'll just see everyone bounce for a second. Bounce in it, feel it. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. The good thing about this is if you had to stand for the rest of this presentation, which you know, you could just switch legs. So now switch, put the left leg back to like 10 o'clock. Right? And yeah, just like get, feel it. Listen, I can tell you that it takes effort, but you can learn how to stand like this. Now, Paige, who's now the person whose name I know, Paige is going to come over here. Okay? And you all can sit down so you can see this. Paige is going to come over here. So, Paige, just stand here facing just me. She's standing with her feet just shoulder width apart, normal. If I was standing like this, this feels more closed. But you don't move, and I just do this and put my foot back. And now suddenly there's space. What's your name? Julia. So, if Julia wanted to, she could now join us. If I was like this, this is the like, yeah, don't interrupt us. And this is the, I'm here to meet people. Don't interrupt us. <laughs> Excellent. It is a super simple act, uh, but it will help you navigate the room because people do not navigate the room with their shoulders squared. Uh, if anyone here has a tendency to uh, cross their legs as they're standing, you know who you are. Um, it's just hard to balance. You know, I've been doing this talk for over a decade. It's really hard to do. And also, you then have to un if you're trying to move away from a conversation, you have to untangle yourself in three different maneuvers. Where here, you're already in a walking position. If you want to go any direction, you can just start moving. Okay, you just you just kind of go. Um, but it also creates a more welcoming and open environment. I think there's a real difference between inviting people to attend an event and welcoming them once they come there. And I think that as 
uh, co-participants, we can be co-creating a culture that invites people in, particularly those of us who, who's here, who's, who's a regular, who's been coming here for a while to these events? Who's the regulars? Raise your hands, raise your hands. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, yeah, you're like, have to. So, <laughs> I heard the last name. So, um, uh, so for, for think about, like, if you like what's going on here, you play a role in making sure that people who show up feel welcome and they come back. If someone comes here three times in a short enough amount of time that Rogero remembers them, then they're a regular. And that means they then have a role to play in how they create a culture going forward. All right, I'm like, I have so much, I'm just gonna move to the next thing. This, I love this phrase. I love it. Except let's think about it. What would your life be like if you could be a unicorn? Are you picturing like rainbows and sunny skies? No, it's more like, Hey, what's it like to, can I touch your, and all that other curious questions. It's like, I've never met a unicorn. That's, that's what's gonna happen. I've never met a unicorn. Hey, what's it like to, can I touch, right? And there, there's some nods in the room because there are people who understand. They move through the world as unicorns. A unicorn doesn't fit in to the demographics of the room and gets called out for their difference. And that could be purposeful. You've got pink hair, you know, like, right? But like, it's, it, it's, but, you, but it doesn't mean it's not exhausting having to talk about it. So like, there are people whose names are a little bit different. And here's the funny thing about names. It's about a US centric view. The name culturally might be like as common as Christine, Sarah, you know? Like there's literally a billion people with a B. They've got four cousins of three different generations of that name. And you're like, oh, I've never heard of that name. That's a really exotic name, you know? Or how about like, wow, you're really tall. How tall are you? And if you're over 12, it's just not cool anymore, okay? You know? <laughs> I met a guy, he was he was 16 at the time. He's probably like 21 now. I've been talking to this for a while. Um, and I know he's six foot eight. And I know this because he told me that he has a card, a business card. And when people ask him, the hands in the card and it says six, eight, no, I don't play basketball. <laughs> if the answer can be written on a business card, it gets the question gets asked too often, right? And it's not going to make you memorable. It's not interesting. He's not going to want to stick around and keep talking to you. So, like, we have to be really careful that we don't um, single people out for their difference in a way that makes them feel unwelcome or just feels like off-putting or I don't belong. Um, I, I know this for myself, this feeling of being uh, a unicorn. I'm an out trans guy. If anyone look, did anyone look me up ahead of time? This is interesting. You spend any time with people, you should look to see who they are. I mean, Jared was like, I knew. Was <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you always, who the speaker is, sponsors, organizers, you know, look people up. So, um, so I'm an out trans guy. What that means is that when I was born, my parents told me I had a little girl. My parents were not very tall. They assumed I'd be a little woman. That's a, more like a book than it is me. I grew up with a different path, so here I am. And um, so you all have this reaction in your own heads. Me telling you this way means you don't have that reaction on me. That's how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. And and if you ask me other questions, I'll just tell you that Google exists for a reason. And, <laughs> and I'll look like, tell you whatever questions you have. And the thing is, like, People who, who have experienced difference have to come up with a way to manage this and that everyone has experienced in one way or another. Like sometimes you have to put yourself in places where you're different than other people, um, but everyone has that experience. So then why would you do that to somebody else? And that's the thing, like even people who experience it still do it to each other. Um, you know, as soon as you meet someone, you immediately point something out. So like, what do you notice in this picture? Right, like if you want to tell this woman in pain, Wow, that's quite an outfit. Right? She put a she put effort into the outfit, right? There's a difference between who she is based on like what she has no control over and what she's chosen. So she's chosen a vibrant magenta those pants or something. Right? Totally love it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> but don't ask her about her hair. Don't even don't even talk about her hair. Just don't. Just don't talk about black women's hair. And I just did it. <laughs> you made it pink. But you didn't. Because I was really hot on the color. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, she doesn't want to hear it. There's a certain conversation she's done with. But if you have a compliment, a compliment is you say something nice about something that someone has chosen, right? Like jewelry, some certain sunglasses. You know, a guys who have the tie that perfectly matches the jacket and the shirt. And everyone was like, 
where do you, you got good style? Where do you shop? You know, like that's a compliment. You know, um, well, I really like your frames. You know, uh, that, that's a compliment. Your necklace is so beautiful to get it while you're traveling. And then you find out they got it at Target, Target at Target Shopping. It doesn't matter. Like whatever you say, it still brings people forward. So just be aware that. You know, what is that first thought that comes to your head when you meet someone? And if it's merely out of curiosity, like hold on to it. Now there's a point where, what's your name? Gardit. Gardit? If Gardit and I get to get to know each other, there's a moment where we're going to share grammar recipes. That's when I can start asking more questions because I'm also going to share more of myself. Up to that point, it's, it's like we're not there yet. You know, and this is true, if you've just met someone, they join your team at work and you're experienced and they're new, if they're an intern and you're a boss, like there are moments where I had a friend who uh, asked a server where she was from, and this is such a loaded, this is a loaded question 10 years ago, it's an even more loaded question now, and when the server like hesitated and then said some Caribbean island, and they walked away, I asked my friend, oh, are you collecting them all? Did you, did you get, are you done? Did you get all of them? Like, what are you talking about? I said, oh, I figured you were trying to meet someone from every island. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, then why were you asking? Oh, I was just curious. I'm like, you know, our server really doesn't have like choice to respond. Like our, our tip is her salary, you know, like she has to respond and you just don't know where that conversation is going. So it's just like being aware of the, the impact that you have and whether people feel like they're comfortable and able to stay with you. <sighs> okay, this is a different piece of this, which is that when you're at the event, Right, the last piece was about like, if you're gonna make it to meet people, don't screw up on, on saying hello. But here's an opportunity to say hello to people that we always miss. We're at a breakout session. <laughs> These X's are people. See on the left side of the screen here, you've got three people sitting in a row, not talking to each other. Where are, what are they doing? They're doing this, their heads are down, right? These, these people know each other, people sitting next to each other, they know each other, they work together all the time. So that's why they're sitting together. And you're just thinking, like, what a missed opportunity. There were thousands of people at this event, and you chose this session, and some of these people, and most people aren't even here yet, these people ducked out of the vibrant, chaotic hallway, they come into this session, they're your people. They chose the same topic, they're in the space, so rather than just getting on your phone and sitting as far apart as possible, why not engage with them, right? Why not take this as an opportunity to say hello? You might think I'm exaggerating. Here are some photos that I took at an event that was at last year, Cup <coughs> Spots Inbound. Thank you, great work. I have to tell you, I showed this to them, by the way. I, I met with um, Doug, Doug Stone, and I showed this to them. I had it on my phone. And um, they do all this networking and like fun stickers and free newbies, and they do solo, they do all this stuff. And yet, this is what people do when they get to a breakout session. One, two, three people along the wall here, up ahead. One, two, three people along the hall, on the aisle. One, two, three people. And then there are these people in the middle. You see, this is an island. <laughs> He's like, no one doesn't talk to me. You know, like I don't want to be one of those people who takes an aisle seat, but I'm not going to talk to people. So you think, okay, this one's even funnier. Same session. Mm. Same session. Wow. By the way, this was a session on networking. <laughs> <laughs> I did not uh, leave this session. I was there to support a friend, uh, and there the speakers up front. Uh, you know, not reading people. They're just like waiting for the presentation to begin. Um, we got in, we were all, you know, they make people stand outside like in a queue and then they open the door and everyone rushes in to grab an aisle seat. Six rows deep, only the aisle seat, everything else is empty. So what I do is I introduce the person in the back right to the person in red, and then the person in red and the person in green. The person, the guy in blue, he was like, this. he like put his phone down and prepared himself. <laughs> um, and, and I got them all talking to each other. And that's all you gotta do. You just gotta interrupt it. You know, if the room stays silent, then everyone, including me, will be silent as we walk in. If you can disrupt that. So if HubSpot were to train people, the speakers, volunteers, to like ask questions, have a question on the board, you know, you could do something like this. Uh, boom. Here with colleagues go mingle, here alone, don't stay that way. And you could like just reinforce that kind of mantra so that people know this is a space for us to engage and connect. This is the purpose of this. The funny part is that a lot of these messaging at every conference I go to is said in the first timers orientation, but not repeated. And so people who've been going for a while just like 
stop remembering that they're here to meet people other than people they already know. And, and so they just sort of miss that, that piece of it. And so, you know, we could have people sort of mingling and engaging a lot more. And so any one of us could be the host. You know, being a host and having a host mindset isn't about who is it, uh, you know, booking the room. Um, it's not any of that. It's like, you know, clearly you're the host, but all the people raise their hand. Who's been here three times? Yeah, you're all hosts. You're all regulars. Like, you've been here, you've been coming, you know people, you make introductions. So this is like part of like the co-creation of that culture. Um, I think that was, oh yeah, okay, that was my 10 minutes. There you go, or more, but, <laughs> or more. Um, I have a little giveaway, top 10 tips for conference connections. Um, you don't need to capitalize the end. I'm just being respectful of your, your branding. Thank um, you. Location design. <laughs> Appreciate um, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you, you type that in. It's an email opt-in. If you like it, stick around. If you don't, uh, subscribe. I write a weekly email, a little story about my life. and get a little challenge for how you can update, you know, improve your online. Um, you'll see my books up there and my podcast. Um, I have books for sale, usually 20 bucks to sell for 15 Cash, Venmo, personal checks, whatever. Um, we'll figure it out. People are interested and I'm happy to sign them. And that's my story. Thanks everybody. Thank you.